हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दीक्षा कर्नाटका यूट्यूब चैनल एंड यू आर करेंटली वॉचिंग के सी ई टी सिक्सटी आउट ऑफ सिक्सटी इन फिजिक्स सीरीज वेर वी आर डिस्कसिंग ईच चैप्टर कंसेप्ट वाइज एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स एंड कैपेसिटेंस पार्ट टू वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड बेसिक्स अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट बेसिकली द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड Uh, electric potential and again we will go back to electric potential energy i told you yesterday that uh, uh, we are starting with electric potential energy we'll go to electric potential and then again we'll come back to electric potential energy again so we are going back to electric potential energy again and as if you are watching this video for the first time you should know that you have to have to join our whatsapp group the link is given in the description below <coughs> and also one more thing every day we are launching a video at 9 pm on our uh, youtube channel the link for that will be given to our whatsapp channel as well so if you are subscribed to our whatsapp channel you will get a notification that a new video is uploaded also please remember that every sunday 10 am we are going to give you a 30 set question paper k set premier league or kpl we are calling it so every sunday 10 pm we are going to give you a question paper that you will get entire day to solve it and in the evening around 6 pm we will give you the solution okay a video detail video solution with step by step process so don't uh, forget to join our whatsapp group and uh stay tuned for more such update so st we are starting with our topic let's see what all we are going to discuss today first we will start with equipotential surface then we will go to relationship between field and potential and potential energy of a system of charges also will be discussed then potential energy in an external field very important and then lastly potential energy of a dipole in an external field that will also be discussed in this lecture now also in between somewhere we are going to give you the solution for yesterday's homework problem yes if you are watching for the first time you should know after each lecture we are giving you two homework problem not five not 10 only two homework problem and we are asked you to uh, solve you those questions and mention the answer in the comment today also you will be sh sharing two more homework problem so try to answer them and Uh, mention the answer in the comment below i will mark if you are correcting uh, if your answer is correct and if you are answering within 24 hour of launching this video i will personally reply everyone if your answer is correct or if your answer is wrong in both cases i will be answering you so don't worry i am with you all the time whenever you are studying even if you have any queries any doubts you can uh, mention that in the comment as well so let's start with the journey first equipotential surface so let us know what is an equipotential surface equi means what <coughs> equi means equal right equi term comes from the term equal and potential obviously the name suggest potential potential we already know what is potential is so so equipotential means if a surface is at equal potential everywhere then we call it equipotential surface so if i uh, im imagine a surface where all the points on the surface is at equal potential then we call it equipotential right so an equipotential surface is a surface with constant value of potential so what is the meaning of equal potential so potential is constant throughout the surface okay at all points on the surface so let us uh, take one example uh, so we know that uh, potential due to a point charge is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r right so what will happen uh, if i consider a point charge say at this point q okay so we have a point charge here right and if we want to measure the potential potential is a scalar quantity remember that potential is a scalar quantity now if i want to measure say potential at a distance say r1 say r1 okay now if 
this is a point charge, then we can construct a spherical surface. Okay, this is this is not a circle. These are all concentric spheres. These are called concentric sphere. So now, if I construct a spherical surface, each point on the surface, they will all be at the distance r1, right? Even here also, inside also, all the points on the surface of this sphere will have equal potential. Okay. So now we can say that this plane, this surface, okay, this sur spherical surface is a equipotential surface. Now, this is not any one surface, you can consider uh, infinite number of sur surfaces, each concentrated on the uh, circle, uh, sorry, uh, at this charge. So, if we construct any arbitrary sphere, any arbitrary sphere okay, at some distance, say uh, capital R, okay, on that uh, each point on the surface, they will be at equal potential. right? So, this is called equi uh, equipotential surface for a point charge. Now, for a point charge, they are all concentric spheres uh, and the center is the center of the charge. right? So, uh, we will see some more examples of different charge configuration as well. Now, you have to remember that for any charge configuration, equipotential surface through a point is normal to the electric field at that point. So, what is the meaning of that? Uh, let me erase everything. So, suppose I want to find the electric field at this point. Okay. So, electric field at this point will be normal to the surface. That means, electric field will be electric field will be normal to the tangent drawn at that point. So, if you draw a tangent and then you will know that it is normal to the field at that point. Right. Let us move on to few example. Let us consider a constant electric field. Okay. Constant electric field means electric field is a constant. If you consider on the, this line, along this line, each point will be at equal potential. In fact, if you consider a plane, each plane will be at a constant potential. So, this potential say V 1, this potential say V 2, this potential say V 3. Okay. Uh, parallel electric field, electric field lines are parallel to each other and they are moving in like this. Now, each point uh, have equal potential, but they are not uh, same. Okay, V 1, V 2, V 3 are not same, but V 1 at a each point on this surface, the potential is V 1. Each point on this surface, potential is V 3. Right? Now, uh, I have one bonus question for you. Tell me the relationship between V 1, V 2 and V 3. Which one is greater? Okay. So, uh, V 1 is greater or V 2 is greater or V 3 is greater. Okay. It is obvious that either V 1 is greater or V 3 is greater. V 2 is in between of them. Right? That much is obvious from this diagram. Now, you have to uh, understand which one is greater V 1 or V 3. Uh, previous year K C T a uh, few years back, there was a question came. They uh, give you some equipotential surface and they asked you which one is uh, at higher potential. So, uh, do not ignore this concept, this is also very important concept, you have to be careful about this. Now, equipotential surface for one positive, one negative that is a dipole, this is a dipole. For a dipole, this is the construction of equipotential surface and also you need to remember that uh, equipotential, another equipotential surface, very prominent equipotential surface is the surface passing through the equatorial plane or uh, perpendicular bisector, both you can write. So, there is a question on this as well. Previous year, they have asked you which one is a uh, right one equatorial plane, uh, right one uh, equipotential surface for a dipole. So, that is one of the very known, well known equipotential surface for uh, dipole. Okay. And if both of them are positive or both of them are negative, the equipotential surface looks like this. Okay. Now, I have two questions for it. One I will solve, another one you have to tell me that is, what is the shape of equipotential surface for a line charge? If you remember in electric field, we have discussed about line charge. So, what is a line charge? Line charge is like this okay. and a line charge density is constant, say lambda. Now, what you have to do? You have to find the equipotential surface, the shape of the equipotential surface for a line charge. Say this is plus, okay, say this is plus, does not matter plus or minus, 
equipotential surface shape does not change on the sign of the charge. Okay, you need to remember that the sign of the charge does not change the equipotential surface, only the direction of electric field will be maybe either outward or inward based on the uh, sign of the charge, but equipotential surface will remain same. Now, tell me what is the uh, uh, shape of this. For a line charge, the symmetry is cylindrical symmetry. If you remember, we have discussed that for a line charge, the symmetry is cylindrical. So, for a line charge, the equipotential surfaces are concentric, uh, coaxial, sorry, not concentric, coaxial uh, cylinders. Okay. So, that means all the cylinders that you can construct by making this as the axis, they are all equipotential surfaces. And even though this potential, this is the all points on this, on this cylinder at equipotential, but this potential and this potential are not same. Okay, V1 and V2 are not same, one of them is greater, one of them is uh, uh, less uh, greater. So, you have to understand this as well. Now, the question, the bonus question I am going to give you is this, what is the work done to move a charge on an equipotential surface? You have to answer that after the, uh, we complete the lecture, before we complete the lecture, uh, you have to figure this out and uh, tell me the answer for this question. What is the work done? Suppose, I have a charge over here, okay, I have a charge over here and I want to move say this is Q 1, this was is not done anything. So, I am using this one and you want to move this charge uh, from here to here on that surface, okay, the distance say x okay, and you want to move say A to B. Now, what is the work done in moving this charge from A to B? That is the question. Okay. If you are not able to understand the meaning of the question, the meaning of the question is this, that you are moving a charge in an equipotential surface. What is the net work done when you are moving the charge? Mention the answer in the comment below. I will obviously reply if you are answering correctly or incorrectly. Okay. I will mention if it is correct, yes it is correct. If it is incorrect, I will mention incorrect, but I will not tell you the answer. If you want to get the answer, uh, you have to mention that in the comment okay, and you have to check the comment as well. Now, let us move on. Now, what we are trying to do is the relationship between electric field and electric potential. So, we have two equipotential surfaces. Suppose, the equipotential surface at the below has a potential V plus delta V and equipotential surface at the top has a potential V. Okay and the distance between them is delta L. Right? Now, what you are trying to do? We are trying to move say a charge Q, okay, normal Q or DQ whatever it is. We are trying to move this charge from this point till this point and we are trying to find uh, the work done. Okay? If we try to find the work done, the work done will be obviously charge times potential difference. right? So, work done is Q times delta V, that is from the definition of work done, that is from the definition of work done and potential, that potential is basically uh, if the uh, charge is Q and the difference in uh, potential is delta V, yesterday we have learned that work done is Q times delta V. Now, let us go back to the electric field chapter. In electric field chapter and some combination of mechanics, in electric field chapter uh, and mechanics combination, we uh, know that work done is basically force times displacement. So, F d L is equal to Q delta V. Okay, now, what is F? From electrostatics, we know that F is Q times electric field E times delta L equals to Q times delta V. So, F is Q E, right? F force is Q times electric field. So, now this Q Q will cancel. So, we can write E is basically magnitude wise delta V by delta L. Okay. More accurately, there is a negative sign involved here. Okay. So, we can write this as E x, only one component. This is not simple, very simple. This is little bit uh, complicated formula. If you are studying physics in your graduation, or higher level, then you will know why this is not so simple. Okay. 
something uh, new uh, quantity is being used here, but you should know that this formula is well and uh, true for x component of electric field. Uh, since electric field is a uh, vector quantity and potential is a scalar quantity, we can use the component system. So, when we are writing the uh, electric field, okay, we know that any vector can be written in the form of E x i cap, E y uh, j cap, so on, E z k cap like that. So, we are only uh, considering the x component of electric field and x component of electric field can be written by minus delta v by delta x. So, why this is negative sign? Here, <coughs> the electric field points upward direction. You should remember that, you should uh, know that the electric field points from higher potential to lower potential, okay. whereas, uh, potential is from uh, in the opposite to the direction of electric field, it is decreasing. Right. So, in the direction of electric field potential is decreasing. So, if you are going from here to here basically, you are going towards a decreasing potential. Decreasing potential means work done uh, should be negative according to the definition. Okay. That is why, if you are using a negative sign, you will get a negative sign here, okay. nothing else. But, if you are uh, wor not worried too much for most of the part, uh, negative sign is not uh, significant, you can use simply magnitude values because they will ask you what is the magnitude of electric field, what is the magnitude of uh, potential like that. So, if unless and until the question is little bit uh, tricky and complicated, especially for JE, if you are answering JE questions, maybe the, uh, this negative value is uh, significant for KCET exam, most of the time they are going to ask you what is the value of electric field. So, uh, magnitude of electric field. So, in that case you do not need to use any sign, sign is no longer required. Okay. But remember that uh, the, the sign is actually negative. So, if you are preparing for any other competitive exam and in that case, uh, maybe the sign is also important. Now, electric field is in the direction which the potential decreases steepest. What is the meaning of that? So, uh, as I said, electric uh, field is opposite to the uh, in, uh, decreasing potential, uh, sorry, increasing potential, right. So, electric field is in the direction of decreasing potential. Now, if I move, suppose from for this uh, diagram, if I move from here to here, electric potential is decreasing. From here to here is also electric potential is decreasing. Now, what is the direction of electric field? This one or this one or any other direction. So, there are multiple possibilities, right. So, but we will not consider these possibilities because they are not relevant here. Only the direction where electric field is decreasing the steepest. Steepest means delta V by delta L is maximum. So, for minimum displacement, delta V is maximum. Okay. So, if this value is maximum, then only we say that is the direction of electric field. So, in this case, delta L is minimum. Any other delta L you take, that will be more than this. right? That is why this is the direction of electric field. You should remember this point. Next point is, its magnitude is given by the change in the magnitude of potential. As I said, change in the magnitude of potential per unit displacement that is delta d v by d x. This is the uh, representation in terms of uh, uh, differentiation. So, differential representation is here, though differential representation is not there in your N C R T book, but I prefer differential uh, representation in case, in case they ask you a little bit complicated question uh, with the v that you have to do the differentiation that is still possible if you know this uh, notation. Okay. Now, the potential per unit displacement normal to the equipotential surface at that point. So, as I said equipotential is the normal to that point. So, basically if you consider this uh, th there is a line here and equip, uh, e is normal to that point. Okay. Now, let us move on. Potential energy of system of charges. Okay. Very important thing. Now, what we are moving in into is potential energy of system of charges. What is the meaning of system of charges? We have uh, q 1, q 2, q 3, there are three charges, they have different distances and I want to find what is the energy of this system. So, if I want to calculate energy, what is most important thing about energy? If you remember in your first PU, you have learned that energy is basically the uh, work done, the work that you give to this system. 
you know, what work I will give to this system. There are three charges, I have not done any work, wait, wait. So, what is the meaning of that is first we will consider only one charge, understand this point. So, there are no charges present in this, okay. initially the slate was blank. So, imagine the initially there are no charges. So, what you have done, you have brought one charge. Okay. So, when the first charge, this is the first charge of the universe suppose, this is the first charge, nothing is there. So, nothing is there means potential is 0 everywhere if nothing is there. So, you brought in one charge from infinity to this point, in infinity also potential 0, at this point was also potential 0, now you brought in the first charge. Now, once this first charge is brought in, now the potential around it is not 0, each and every point will have a different value of potential, right. So, now let us go back to our diagram. Okay. So, this charge q 1 when we brought this first charge there was no potential all the pot point were same potential and we have done no work. So, this potential to bring in this charge was 0 work. Now, what is the work done when I brought in the second charge. Okay. So, first charge we brought in and I want to brought uh, now bring the second charge. Okay. So, first charge we have already brought in, no work was done. So, for to bring in uh, this charge q 1, the work done is 0. Now, we brought in the second charge. When we brought in the second charge, okay, now there is a potential due to this charge, right. So, there is a potential due to this charge. What is the potential due to this charge? This, uh, this is r uh, 1 2 suppose, the distance is r 1 2. Now, what is the work done due to uh, this charge at uh, on this charge potential let us first find the potential do not uh, bring in this charge yet what is the potential at this point potential is simple say this is uh, point number 2 so potential v2 is nothing but k q1 by r12 right so this is the potential at this point due to this charge simple formula now if i want to bring another charge from infinity to this point say q 2, then what will happen? Then what is the work done? Work done w 2 will be q times v 2, right. Work done is basically charge multiplied by potential, I already mentioned that times k q 1 pi r 1 2. So, this is the work done number 2. So, work done total work done is q 1 q 2 by r 1 2. Okay. I am uh, slightly explaining the uh, uh, principle as well, even though the derivation is, uh, you do not need to remember the derivation, but sometimes it is important to remember how this came. Now, we brought in the third charge. Now, the for the third charge work done, similarly we can write the work done for the third charge will be q 3, okay, q 3 times potential uh, v 3 plus uh, v 3 dash. Okay. So, what is the meaning of that? So, now we have one more charge here. Okay. So, what is the distance? This is r say 1 3, this is r 2 3. Okay. So, what is the potential due to this charge at this point? Poten this charge was not here initially, right. So, there will be a potential due to this charge at this point, we are calling this V 3 and there is a potential due to this charge at, at this point, we are calling this V 3 dash. So, it will be Q 3 times K Q 1 by R 1 3 plus K Q 2 by R 2 3, right. So, total work done in this case w 3. So, w 3 will be equals to k q 1 q 3 by r 1 3 plus k q 2 q 3 by r 1 3 sorry 2 3. This is the work done. Now, what is the total work done? total work done is the energy stored. So, potential energy that is the potential energy of the system. So, total work done is w 1 plus w 2 plus w 3. 
right. So, w 1 is 0, w 2 we calculated. So, in short we can write this as k q 1 q 2 by r 1 2 plus q 2 q 3 by r 2 3 plus q 3 q 1. This is the cyclic rule of writing. So, if you are uh, familiar with it, it helps you to remember. Okay, this is the cyclic way of writing. So, in short what you need to do is you need to uh, let me write the formula in a better way, so that you can understand that. I will be sharing this as a note, so I do not want to erase too much as well. So, w 2 is k q 1 q 2 by r 1. So, total energy, total energy or energy uh, potential energy, potential energy symbol is let me use the potential energy symbol as well. Potential energy is represented by u, right. So, this is the symbol u. So, u total or potential energy of the system is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, ok. So, k is uh, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, right. So, we can write this as, remember this, first charge times second charge divided by the distance between them plus second charge multiplied by third charge divided by the distance between them and third charge multiplied by first charge divided by distance between them. Okay. So, any two uh, charges you take divide them by their distance, any two charges you take divided by their distance and it continues if we have multiple charges. Suppose, instead of having uh, three charges, if you have four charges then there will be more terms. Okay. You have to take all the possible combinations with other charges. Okay. So, there will be two more extra terms if there are four charges. Okay. So, no matter how many charges are there, you can take as many pairs and you can add them in this formula, because potential is uh, scalar quantity. So, you do not need to worry too much about it. You can simply add and calculate the potential energy. This is a very important concept for your PU as well as your uh, KCT exam. Okay. Now, potential energy of a system of charges, the final expression of u, the expression that we calculated is independent of the way the configuration is assembled. So, it does not matter. So, initially what we assume, there was only one charge q 1, right. Then we brought in the charge q 2 and lastly we brought in the charge q 3. Now, imagine that you are thinking that instead of bringing in q 1, I brought in q 3 first. Will the energy be different? or instead of bringing in q 3, I brought uh, q 1 q 2 first. Will this be different, if I brought the q 2 charge first. So, it is saying that no matter which charge you brought in first, no matter what order you brought in first, it does not matter. So, q 3 q 2 uh, q, uh, q 1 or q 2 q 3 q 1 or q 2 q 1 q 3, whatever order you follow, it does not matter as long as you keep the assembly as same as possible. So, basically the, if the distances are same, the positions are same, then it does not matter how you assemble them, it is independent of the order. Okay. The potential energy is given by the present state of configuration and not the way it, it's the state is achieved. So, present state only depends on the state only. Okay. In other words, we call it a state function. Okay. Uh, you mentioned in the comment below, if you heard the term state function and if you have heard, where if you heard, have heard that. Okay. Now, let us uh, answer uh, our homework questions. Now, it is time for us to go back to our yesterday's lecture and look into the homework question. I know some of you have started answering the homework questions, but I am only getting one or two responses each video. So, I uh, hope that this uh, response improves and you are watching the entire video to answer the questions I am asking you end of the day. Okay. So, two concentric spheres of radii r capital R and small r have positive charges q 1 and q 2. 
with equal surface charge densities, what is the electric potential at their common center. So, what was the question? We have two concentric spheres. Okay. One is small r, another one is capital R and what else is mentioned is that they have equal charge densities. So, if surface charge densities, if the surface charge density for this is sigma, then this will also be sigma, very very important. Okay. And it is also mentioned that the charge on this surface is q 1, charge on this surface is q 2. So, if the surface charge density is given, then q 1, q 2 does not matter anymore. Okay. But we will use it and we will uh, use as much as required, then we will, uh, because the option if you see there is no q 1, q 2 given. So, q 1, q 2 is basically given uh, as an eye wash, it is called eye wash, that means they are trying to confuse you. Okay. So, now let us try to write down the potential uh, inside a sphere, you know uh, potential inside a conducting sphere is constant and potential is given by say V 1 or uh, let us say V small r. Okay. I am uh, marking them as small r and capital R that will be easier for you. So, it is given by k q 1 by r square, so, it is constant and it is equals to the radius right and V small capital R is same formula k q 2 by r square right. Now, total potential total potential is basically potential is a scalar quantity. So, they gets added normally right. So, k q 1 square by r plus q 2 square by r. Okay. Now, if you see the answer, if you see the answer, none of the options are given like this. Okay. Options are given in terms of sigma. Okay. So, surface charge density, we need to find the relationship between uh, surface charge density and q 1, q 2. Now, surface area of this entire, this is a spherical surface, right. So, what is the surface area of a spherical surface? Surface area of a spherical surface is 4 pi r square for uh, this uh, inner one, inner charge. Okay. So, this is 4 pi small r square. Now, if the surface charge density is sigma, then what is the total charge? Surface charge density means, I told you the formulas uh, while discussing Gauss's law in that uh, video, I uh, told you that surface area times surface charge density gives us the total charge. Right? So, q 1 is basically 4 pi r square into sigma. Okay. Similarly, q 2 will be equals to 4 pi r square sigma. Right? Any doubt? If you have any doubt, mention that in the comment. Okay. Now, here what we are going to do, you have to first simplify q 1. q 1 was 4 pi r square sigma. Right Now, we have to uh, use these two values 4 pi r square sigma, we have to use these two values there, but we will, we are smart, we are not just going to use it as it is. What we will do? We will just simplify it a little bit. So, if you see here, we have q 1 square, sorry, no, where is this square came from? This is wrong, okay. this is incorrect, this is not square. So, I made something wrong here. So, q 1 divided by r is there. right? So, what we will do? First, we will calculate q 1 by r. q 1 by r means 4 pi r square sigma by r. right? So, now 1 r will cancel. So, 4 pi r times sigma. Similarly, q 2 by r is equals to 4 pi r sigma, right? both are brothers. So, we can similarly apply the uh, law of similarly, right? for <laughs> if two are brothers, we can say similarly, that is the beauty. Now, let us put the values. So, it is 4 pi sigma r plus 
uh, 4 pi uh, the order does not matter I am just uh, writing it in so that we can get the answer quickly. So, 4 pi sigma small r right. So, now let us put the value of k, k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, 4 pi sigma is common, 4 pi sigma is common and r plus small r, okay, 4 pi 4 pi cancels. So, I try to solve as detailed as possible, so that you do not have any confusion. I am not trying to solve it within uh, 1 minute or less than 1 minute or less than 30 second, it is quite possible. Uh, I know many of you do not understand if I solve it in a quick way. So, that is why while solving homework problem, we have lot of time. So, I do as much elaborated uh, steps as possible, so that you do not miss out a single concept. Many other uh, teachers, they solve problems like in a hurry, they have uh, all the hurry in their life. So, they do not explain the uh, questions properly. So, I have seen that still if you feel that I am doing little bit faster or if you think that I am doing little much slower than what you are expecting, then do mention that in the comments sir, uh, we know basics of uh, physics, I want uh, you to solve these questions little bit faster, I can do that, but if you feel that I am doing little bit faster and you want me to slow down, that also is possible. Okay. Now, let us move on to the next question, electric charges of this is also very simple and uh, interesting question. Uh, plus 10 micro coulomb, plus 5 micro coulomb and minus 6 micro coulomb are placed at the corners of a square of side root 2 meter. The electric potential at the center of the square is. So, let us uh, go to the next page, where I can draw it in clear way. So, this will be given to as a note. So, I try to uh, keep as much writing as possible on the board, so that you get a full uh, note okay, of the class lecture. So, you do not need to take lecture while I am giving you the uh, lecture, you just concentrate on the lecture. Once the lecture is over, you can download the PDF and read from there. You can uh, download and uh, read in your laptop, in your PC or in your uh, mobile, okay, does not matter. As long as you are reading, I am happy. If you are not reading, then I am not happy. Right. Now, let us look into this question. We have uh, sorry, not a triangle, three charges are there, but uh, they are on a square. Okay. Is it a square? Yeah, almost a square, right. Now, let us see what else is mentioned. There are three charges. Okay. Any any three points you can take, you can take these three points, you can take these three points, any order does not matter, okay, because it is a square of side root 2 meter. Okay, we will see. Now, if you construct this diagonal, what is the length of this diagonal? What is the length of a diagonal of a square of side A? If you remember this it is easier for you to answer this question. If you do not remember it, you have to do the mathematics using Pythagoras theorem. Uh, that is also fine, but it will take longer time. In your exam, if you are writing for board exam, you have that time. But if you are writing KCET, JE or NEET, then you do not have time to uh, find the formulas. That is why when you are writing any competitive exams, you have to remember the formulas as well as some of the concepts. If you forget the formulas, you can uh, do the back calculation and you can uh, find the formula as well. Now, if this is a, this is a, then this is the diagonal, right, and this is a right angle triangle. So, pi, uh, this is a right angle triangle, okay. So, Pythagoras theorem states that this is a square plus a square, right, or a root 2. Now, mention in the comment below how many of you actually know this formula, remembered this formula before I solved it. Okay. So, I already have done a basic uh, mathematics course. So, you can go and check that uh, videos. There are four videos, very important videos. Okay. Uh, you have to check those videos. Now, what is the side here? A is root 2. So, length of the diagonal say L. So, L will be root 2 times root 2, that is only 2. 
so length of the diagonal is only 2 right now what else is said is that all these charges you have to find the potential at the center now if you know all the points uh, all the charges all four corners are at equal distance from the center that's why it is called center right center means whatever is the distance from this charge to here whatever the distance from this charge to here same distance is from this charge to here okay now what is the distance if this total distance is l then this will be l by 2 this will also be l by 2 so half half right so l is 2 so what is l by 2 that means 1 meter right so the distance is 1 by 2 and uh, oh sorry uh, 1 meter so v1 plus v2 that is the total potential total potential is v1 plus v2 plus v3 right so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common okay and what about the charges 10 5 minus 6 10 5 minus 6 so 10 nano coulomb means 10 to the power of minus 9 by 1 so distance is 1 meter for each charges distance is same right so don't worry about it 10 5 minus 6 right clear now we have to put the value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught easy value 10 to the power of 9 right so now what will happen if you take 10 to the power of minus 9 common 10 to the power of minus 9 you take common right so 1 1 1 is divided so it will be uh, same so 10 plus 5 minus 6 okay so this this cancels so you get 9 times 9 that is 81 okay oh i made a mistake it is not uh, nano coulomb it is micro coulomb sorry sorry it's fine making mistake is fine as long as you are ready to correct that okay so this is not 10 to the power minus 9 this is minus 6 right right so we will get 81 times 10 to the power of 9 minus 6 that is 3 okay now if you look into the options if you look into the options is there any option given where uh, at 8 uh, 81 into 10 to the power of 3 is given no the only option given is 8.1 times 10 to the power of 4 right so this will be the correct option because we can rewrite this as 8.1 times 10 to the power of 4 right so one point we can uh, uh, remove here now one uh, thing you have to careful about this kind of problem if you make a calculation mistake you do have to check this once okay even if you are making any calculation mistake you need to be sure that your final answer is uh, correct because the options will be given such a way even if you make a calculation mistake you might get a correct answer right so be careful while answering uh, don't be like me huh okay now let's move on potential energy in an external field so uh, we have a single charge suppose we have one charge kept in an electric field we have one electric field and we have a charge okay so what we are trying to do we are trying to find the potential energy of this charge when kept in an external electric field so when a charge q is placed in an external e electric field the potential energy of the charge is given by q times v here v is the electric potential at that point so if the potential 
let me redraw it such that it does not interfere with this text. So, electric field is this okay, and you want to find the potential energy of this charge. So, what we have to do whatever the potential at this point V, okay, the potential at this point is V, then Q times V is the uh, energy of that charge, uh, potential energy of that charge. right? Now, what happens if we have two charges? Okay, for two charges, uh, Q1 and Q2. So initially, it was only Q, so uh, the energy was QV. Now we have two charges, Q1 and Q2. Okay, now what will be the potential energy of this system? So for this system, the potential energy is given by Q1. V p. Okay, so, this charge is kept at point p, this charge is kept at uh, point q, then q 1 times v p. So, v p is the potential energy of this point and v q is the potential energy of this point. Okay, so, q 1 v p is obviously q v, q v is for any one single charge. So, this is for the single charge q 1, this is for single charge q 2 and here we will have a uh, combination of the two charges. So, we have learned the three system of energy of three system of charges. Similarly, here also when the external electric field is added. So, this is only if there is no elect external electric field, this is the energy of the system. right? Okay, this is the energy. Just one thing you have to remember, it is very similar to Coulomb's law, but in Coulomb's law there is a square here. In potential energy, there is no square. In potential energy, there is no square except dipole. Otherwise, there is no square. Okay? So, now potential energy is given by q 1 v p plus q 2 v q plus 1 by epsilon naught q 1 q 2 by r. Okay. Now, external energy of a dipole in an uh, external field. So, we have a dipole here. Okay. We have one dipole here uh, minus q plus q and there is an electric field. We want to find the potential energy of this dipole when we keep it in uh, in this and there is a uh, uh, electric field is present. So, we know that torque acting on the dipole is given by P e P cross e. Right? Now, uh, um, magnitude of that torque is P e sin theta, there is a cross product. So, the work done when we move this, uh, um, this uh, from uh, say theta 0 to theta 1. So, initially suppose this was at theta 0. Okay, say this was theta 0 and I moved it to some angle theta 1. So, if I move it from an angle theta 0 to theta 1, so initially the dipole was at some angle say with the electric field theta 0 okay, and I moved it to some new angle say theta 1. So, when I move this dipole at an angle from theta 0 to theta 1, the work done should be calculated using this formula. Okay, now, if P and E is constant, if P dipole moment is obviously constant for a given uh, charge and if E is constant in that region, then this integration becomes theta naught to theta 1 sin theta d theta. Right? Now, what is the integration of sin theta d theta? Okay, the integration of sin theta d theta is Okay, remember that the in differentiation of cos theta is minus sin theta. So, that is why when we integrate sin theta, we will get minus of cos theta. So, it will be P e upper limit that is cos theta 1 minus minus uh, uh, cos theta that means minus minus will be plus. So, it will be cos theta 0. So, the work done will be P e cos theta 0 minus cos theta 1. Okay. So, this is the expression for work done and this is the energy stored in the dipole. So, energy and work done are uh, this uh, brothers, twin brothers. Okay. You can say they are twin brothers. So, basically they are related to each other such that if you find one, you will get the other one. Okay. So, potential if you see, so if you take uh, a dipole and you try to rotate it in the electric uh, field, then 
whatever energy is stored that energy stored is given by cos theta 0 minus cos theta 1. Now, tell me what is the energy stored uh, in a dipole if you move it from angle uh, 0 to angle 90 degree. You mention that answer also in the comment below. You mention that uh, the question uh, you can mention it in terms of time. Okay. So, whatever time you are seeing this that at time stamp you mention at that uh, at this time whatever question you asked the answer is this. Okay. Now, let us move on we are going to solve one more previous year question. A particle of mass m and charge q is placed at rest in uniform electric field E and then released. Okay. The kinetic energy attained by the particle after moving a distance y is K set 19 this question came. This is a very similar question to what we have solved in the electric field chapter, but here uh, the variables and values are slightly different. So, a particle of mass m and charge q. So, mass is given m and charge is given u. So, if you see in nowhere they have given any thing related to mass. Okay, the all the options there is no mass. So, mass we are not even able to need to consider. Okay, and uh, q is placed in at rest in an uniform electric field E and then release the kinetic energy attained. So, kinetic energy what is the kinetic energy attained? So, kinetic energy is basically when it is moving okay, whatever work is being done on that uh, charge that is the kinetic energy. So, if uh, work is being done on the charge that is the kinetic energy. So, what we have to do? We have to kinetic and do not confuse with uh, E k let me write it as only k that will be simply. Okay. So, k what is the kinetic energy capital K. Okay. So, uh, how can we find the uh, work done? We know that work done is basically charge sorry we know that work done is charge times change in potential right change in potential. So, if it is moved from say point A to point B if it moves from point A to point B, the potential at A is point A and potential at point B is point B, then delta V is V B minus V A, right. Delta V d V whatever you call it. Okay. Now, again we know that electric field is given by magnitude of electric field is given by delta V by delta Y. Here we are using the delta concept not, uh, not delta Y it will be simply y. Okay. So, it was remember E was delta V by delta L. Okay. So, displacement now here the displacement is given uh, in terms of y right. So, uh, by the particle moving a distance y. So, distance y means this distance is y. Okay. So, distance y. So, we know the distance y. So, we can calculate delta V as E times y. So, what is the kinetic energy? Uh, kinetic energy is q times delta v that is q times e times y. So, if you uh, see the correct answer is option A. Okay. So, this is a little bit different than what we have solved in the previous uh, problem we have to use the concept of mechanics as well find the acceleration then put that value. Here it is simple directly from only potential and electric field so, the relationship between electric field and potential if you know that you can use the potential difference and if you know the potential difference you know that what is the work done same work is uh, converted into kinetic energy. Okay. Now, it is time for the homework problem. So, we have as usual given two homework problems this is the homework problem number one uh, you can uh, mention in the comment homework problem solution 1 okay and uh, you can pause the video if you want to solve it now or if you want to solve it from the pdf that will be given after uh, the lecture is over also remember that you have to mention the answer in the comment below and mention homework problem number 1 uh, answer is and homework num problem number 2 the answer is you can pause the video solve it if you are not able to solve it do not worry I will give the answer in our next lecture as usual. So, be patient and I will give you the answer, but 
in the meantime i request you read the question try to answer it and mention the answer in the comment below even if it is wrong does not matter okay also uh, for uh, those who are joining us recently you know that there is a playlist created for our entire uh, series all the videos are going into this pl uh, playlist you can go to diksha karnataka youtube channel click on the playlist and then you search kcet 2025 physics in there you go and uh, see all the videos and you can see all the videos are listed there one by one you can uh, check any of the videos that has been uploaded previously if you have missed any of the videos or if you want to revisit them and revise them bookmark it save it and uh, study whenever you want at your spare time at your free time also i request you join our whatsapp group all the videos that we are posting uh, as soon as it is posted you will get a notification also all the pdfs will be available uh, in our ch whatsapp channel the weekend question paper kpl coming day after tomorrow sunday first kpl mock test one will be released sunday 10 am so get ready be prepared so first week only physics is being released from next week onwards we will be releasing chemistry and uh, uh, maths as well um, possibly so from this week for this week only physics is being released so don't miss the free opportunity where we will be giving you a 30 question paper set from where you can prepare for your kct 2025 exam the syllabus of the test is electric uh, field chapter completely and uh, whatever we have done uh, till today till today okay not saturday saturday there will be a lecture saturday there will be a class but uh, till today whatever we have completed that will be your syllabus for uh, upcoming uh, weekend mock test one okay so i am not giving you too much stress only to uh, one and half chapter for 30 questions be ready be prepared try to answer that question uh, paper and solve it and by the evening you have uh, you will get the video solution of that uh, questions as well you can comment in that video whatever uh, how much marks you have scored from uh, answering uh, the question paper but don't cheat it is up to you if you are cheating you are wasting your own future right and also for all the new viewers i request you subscribe to our youtube channel so that whenever we are uploading any videos physics chemistry bio maths you will get a, a notification on your channel also this channel will continue till you have completed your kcd exam next year and your counseling is over so till that time we will hold your hand we will uh, help you to overcome all the obstacles that you are facing in your life so don't worry we are here and for that you have to give me a thumbs up thank you